Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this primate poster in Photoshop. We're going to recreate this poster inside of Photoshop. Now, obviously, we don't have the original photo. However, we can recreate a pretty similar one using the AI features inside of Photoshop. Now, if you want to follow along, I have included all the assets that I use in a link in the description of this video. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, we're going to start by creating a new file that's 2050 wide by 3000 tall at 72 resolution, square pixels, sRGB. Let's go ahead and hit create. Next, we're going to go to view guides, new guide layout. And here we want four columns, five rows. We don't want any space. And for the margins, I want to have a top margin of 68. And I want to have a bottom margin of 80. So just like that, let's hit OK. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, generative fill or AI inside of Photoshop to create our chimpanzee. So here I'm going to select all, and then we're going to have this option, generative fill. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change the model here to Nano Banana Pro. And in the prompt, I'm going to say generate a photo of a chimpanzee kneeling on the ground wearing a t-shirt and dragging a teddy bear on the ground. He is looking down at the ground. He is isolated against a white background with dramatic lighting. And then I'm going to say Nikon 50 millimeter lens just to give kind of help it along. And when you mention um, lenses, I've seen that it uh, makes a stronger attempt at making it photographically nice. We're going to say ground plane is in view and the chimpanzee is in full view. He does not have human proportions. All right, and then we're going to hit generate. Now, everybody's going to get a different result on this. I did get uh, a good result using this prompt before, so I'm hoping that I get a similarly good result this time. Okay, you know what? This is going to work for our purposes. I think this works just fine. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, we're going to take this and we're going to rasterize it. And then here, I'm going to say remove background. And then what I want to do is I want to pull this down and basically make this the ground plane and have him really on the ground plane with his head just sticking up above this. Now, because I'm gonna be messing with this and making it smaller, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into a smart object first. So we'll just convert this to a smart object. And then the first thing I'll do is I'll use um, Liquify or maybe Puppet Warp to kind of just place him on this ground plane. So let's go to Edit, Puppet Warp, We'll add a point here, maybe a point here, 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 and here. Let's pull this down. We'll pull this down a little bit as well. Yeah. 
and I think that's pretty good. One thing that we probably don't need is this. So I'm just going to add a mask to this. And then with a small brush, I'm going to paint this out. And that looks better. Okay, and then the other thing is I'm going to scale this down. So Command T, I'll move my anchor point to this bottom center. And oh, what happened there? I'm going to scale this down until his head is just sticking above that second guide there. So right about there. And then let's pull this down to about there. And that looks good there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our gradient map. So for this, we're going to use a red color, and this is going to be C40400. And then for our other color, we're just going to use a black. And we want black to be the foreground color and our red to be the background color. And then we're going to go here and add a gradient map. And right away, you can see the effect that that's creating. But you can also see that our um, chimpanzee here is too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and select the chimpanzee, go up to Image Adjustments, and first go to Shadows and Highlights. And we just push up our shadows. That's going to give us some nice detail in there. And then the other thing I'll do is go to Image Adjustments Curves and just push up our highlights. So here, if I just push up the highlights there. So something like that. And having done that, I think we can actually take our shadows or yeah, our shadows down a little bit as well. Because I do want some nice contrast there. So something like this. The other thing is I do want him pointing the other way. So I'm just going to do Command T and then flip horizontal and then move him kind of more like this. OK, then the next thing I want to do is uh, put in our text. So to do that, we're going to go first, just go on to the type tool. And I want to select a Helvetica bold here. So whichever version of Helvetica you have, just use bold. And we're going to make this quite large. So it's going to be 545 pixels. And I actually want it to start on the left. I'm just going to go right here, and I'm going to type in primate. And I want this to be on that guide right there, and then all the way flush to the left. And then what we're going to do is select all. I'm going to hold down Option and use my left arrow just to track this in nice and tight. And then if I go between my letters, I can adjust the individual kerning here. And we're just going to mess with this a tiny bit. Overall, it's pretty good already. So something like... That looks good. And then I do want a few letters to just be off the baseline to give this more of a graphic look. So I'm going to select the T, hold down Shift and Option, and then use my up and down arrow keys to adjust the baseline. OK, so that gives just a little bit of disorder to those letters. All right, next, we're going to add the tagline up here. So I go there. For this, I'm going to make it centered. We're going to make this quite a bit smaller, 68. And this is going to say dangerously close to human. And I'm going to select all and open up my text palette here 
make this all caps and let's see if I have something that is bolder. So I want like a Helvetica black almost or maybe a Helvetica heavy if we have that now. Okay, it doesn't look like I have any of those. So I'm gonna leave it on Helvetica bold, but I'm gonna add a faux bold on top of that. We're gonna set this to zero and this to optical. And then I wanna move this so that it's right on that guide right there. So just like that. Okay, then the last two things we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in some texture. Before we pull in the texture, there's two other things I wanna do. First, I wanna move this primate underneath the uh, chimpanzee so that its head goes above the lettering right there. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna add just a solid color gray layer and we're going to use this as a hard mix. And what that's going to do is it's going to put everything on a strong threshold. Now we're going to take the fill and change this so that it's only doing it about 25%. And here's the before and after. And this helps just give the whole thing more of a graphic look. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull in some grunge. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Place. And inside the Assets folder here, there's a few uh, grunge layers that I got from Texture Labs. I'm going to grab the 188, place it. I'm going to turn it like this and size it up so that it's the size of my canvas. And here, I'm gonna change the blending mode of this to difference. And right away, you can see if I turn off my guides with command semicolon, you can see that grunge is now appearing on my document or on my image. It's pretty subtle and I actually wanna make it a bit stronger. So first, I'm gonna do Command M and that'll put a curve adjustment on this. And then I'm just gonna make this a whole lot lighter on this end till we see that grunge quite strongly. And then I'm also gonna make it a little bit darker on this end so that it goes all the way to white on the light end. There you can see we're getting a really nice grunge effect. And the great thing about difference here is that it works both in the darks and in the lights. So even where it's white or where it's black, you're still getting that nice grunge effect going on top of it. So there you go. The last thing we might want to do here um, is add maybe a bit of film grain on top of this. And to do that, I'm gonna add one more solid color, set this to gray again. And for this one, we're gonna to go to filter, camera raw. It's gonna ask us if we wanna convert it to a smart object. We're gonna say yes. And then here, we're gonna go down to effect and add some grain. I'm gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna put this on linear light. And then we're gonna just take down the fill on it. We don't want it so strong. So probably somewhere around 40% is good enough. Okay, and then the very last thing I wanna do is I wanna take some of the highlights on the chimpanzee and put them on top of everything in a lighter color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer, which is the chimpanzee. I'm gonna do Command J so that I have a copy of it. I'm gonna drag it to the very top of my layer stack here. And I'm gonna go into my curves adjustment, make this a whole lot darker. So something like that. And then I'm gonna do an image adjustment, black and white. Here, maybe take the yellow up just a bit because that's where his face highlights are. And then maybe take the blues down. 
OK, and then lastly, I'm going to add one more curves adjustment. And for this, I'm going to make it even darker, something like that. And then we're going to put this on screen and then double click on the layer and basically make this so that only the very highlights are showing. So we're going to do this until it's just those very highlights. So probably somewhere around there. I kind of like this graphic def graphic effect, but I don't want it clipping so much. So we'll hold down Option and just separate these a little bit. So we have a little bit of the highlight effect there. So something just like that looks really good. We're going to hit OK. And this already added a mask to it. And what I want to do is I want to cut the shirt out of the mask because the shirt is just too bright. But I do like the highlights on the bear and I like the highlights on his face. So let's go to our lasso tool. I'm just going to hold down option and go right around here, selecting just him and not selecting the shirt. I want to basically select just the shirt so I can get rid of it with my mask. So we're selecting around here and around here, just like that. Okay, and then with my mask selected, I'm going to fill this with black. And that looks really good. And then with a soft brush, I'll also just take down my flow here and just make it not as strong down here. So it's mostly just kind of on the top of that bear and then on his face. So just like that. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and instead of it being kind of a white color, we're gonna make it a warm kind of orangey yellow color. So to do that, I'm gonna add a curve and this one's gonna be on top, but clipped so that it's only affecting this layer. And then here we'll just go into the blue Pull this down to make it yellow and then go into our green and add some magenta to make it kind of a gold color. So just like that. And there you go. That's on top of it. And that just gives it a nice kind of a final touch there. So there you have it. That's how you recreate that poster in Photoshop. And hopefully through this, you learn some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, turn on your not notifications, leave me a like, share this video, and let me know in the comments if there's other posters you'd like to see me recreate inside of Photoshop. Also, if you wanna learn Photoshop through projects like this one, check out nuclei.com. I sell professional training, for Photoshop as well as professional assets. All right, here's some other tutorials you can check out, and I will see you next time.